On this episode, we're discussing the slowest time of the year in real estate and what you should do if you're constantly being outbid when purchasing a home. You ask real estate questions and I answer them. This is the Ask Daniel Los Angeles Show. Welcome, everybody, to episode 30 of the Ask Daniel Los Angeles Show. We got four really good real estate questions, hopefully four really good answers. So let's get started. John asks, at what point during the year are home sales usually the slowest? Home sales are typically the slowest in the fourth quarter of the year. So right now, October, November, December, people are busy with the holidays. They don't have time to shop around, or at least they're not motivated enough Uh, to go shop around for a house. Maybe the Christmas office party is a little bit more important to them than buying a house, which is fine, but uh, obviously they're just not motivated. Same with sellers. You know, they don't want to sell their home unless they absolutely have to. So right now there's not that much inventory. The buyers are just not there as well. And when you have that, that just creates a slow period. So fourth quarter of the year is typically when that happens. But at the same time, a lot of good deals are going down because when you have a motivated buyer, motivated seller, you put those two together, that's when you get good deals. So right now, fourth quarter is the slowest period in real estate. Erica and Carlos ask, now that we found a buyer for my home and we are in escrow, is it safe for us to start moving out? Just because you found a buyer for your house does not mean it's safe to start moving out of your home because the buyer has contingencies. They have an inspection, appraisal, loan contingency. That means that they can back out of the deal for any one of those reasons. So if their inspection, they find something really wrong with the property, they can back out. That's usually around 10 days. If uh, they can't get a loan, they can back out of the deal. That's 21 days. So really the first 21 days, you're kind of in limbo. You don't know if the buyer is going to be able to close the deal or not. So I don't advise you to move out during that time. After the contingencies are removed, that 21 day mark, that's when I feel somewhat safe to tell you to start moving out. There's always exceptions to the rule. Buyers may still back out for, or, you know, out of nowhere. So you gotta be careful with that. But at the 21 day part, once all the buyer contingencies are removed, I'm giving you the green light to move out with knowing in the back of your mind that anything still could happen. The deal's not closed until it's closed. Jessica asks, a lot of the homes I'm touring are selling for more than the list price. How am I supposed to buy a property if everything I'm interested in keeps selling over the asking price? In today's market, it's a little tough for buyers because there's multiple offers going on properties are selling above the asking price. But now that you know this information, all you gotta do is adjust your budget. So let's say your property that you wanna purchase is 600 grand, that's your budget. Shop at 550, shop at 575. If if you're looking at properties at 575, you know it's gonna go above that, so you'll end up at 600, right where your budget is at. You won't continue to get outbid, you'll be the person that's now outbidding the others. Rich asks, I do not want to spend a dime on staging my home. What other options are out there to make my home look more attractive to buyers? Most sellers don't want to spend a dime on staging. The reason why is because it costs three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. Somebody comes in, they bring their furniture, they set it all up so that the home looks like a model home. A lot of sellers don't see the benefit of doing this, especially when they already have their own furniture there, even though it's from the 1950s, they can't see that you know, maybe they should replace it with modern day furniture. Some sellers refuse to do it. So what do you do in that case? Because the alternative is to empty the room out and now when you take a picture, it's just an empty box, it doesn't look good. So the other thing you can do is virtual staging. Uh, Realtor can hire a graphic designer who does the virtual staging and basically it's just computer generated furniture that looks great makes it look like a model home. The problem with that is that the buyers, when they come in, and you're gonna get a lot of them because virtual staging looks really good, but when they actually come into the house, they're, they're disappointed. You know, they wanted to see a nice house staged and looking great, and now they just walk into an empty room. So they get a little disappointed, and the love that they had when they saw it online is you know no longer there, which is not great. But that is the second best thing to do if you don't wanna pony up 
and do real staging. That is it for episode 30 of the Ask Daniel Los Angeles show. You can find me on Instagram, almost 20,000 followers, at Daniel Los Angeles is my name. You keep asking real estate questions and I'll keep answering them. <laughs>